Down in the depths of the Euclidean underwater city, the little band of adventurers whom we have come to know as the Gregory Party find themselves faced with a new problem and probably a new danger. The Euclidean girl submarine commander who helped them to escape from the island has been put out of the Euclidean colony and made a prisoner with the Gregory Party. Jerry and Joan believe the girl to be a good friend of theirs, but Captain Bradford isn't so sure. Some emergency has stopped all activity on Euclidia, and Mrs. Gregory and the captain have gone to find out what they can. Jerry and Joan remain with a girl submarine commander in their quarters. Hey, you know, Joan, there was something mighty funny about the way Tex was acting when he went out of here. His manner seemed to be very abrupt. Well, it was more than that. Golly, Tex doesn't get excited very often, but he was sure off balance about something this time. Do you think that we said or did anything to offend him? I believe I know what was troubling the captain. Hmm? What? For some reason, which I cannot understand, he suddenly became suspicious of me. Of you, Elaine? Precisely. Well, oh, what did you do? Nothing. I merely asked permission to take part in all of your discussions for plans to escape. And the captain decided to leave the room, taking Mrs. Gregory with him. Oh, that didn't have anything to do with it. Surely not. I appreciate your confidence in me, but you are mistaken. I have studied too thoroughly the expressions of faces under strain. I know what the captain was thinking. However, it will not change my plans. I would like to help you, and will continue to do so to the best of my ability. Oh, gee, Elaine, we know that. Now quit worrying about it, and tell John and me what this, uh, this emergency or something, what's it all about? I have no more definite knowledge than you two, but I recognized the existence of such an emergency when the concentrated food pellets were substituted for our regular food. Do you think that all of the Euclideans are now engaged in some important work and could not spare the time to prepare our usual meal? Precisely. What may have happened, we can only surmise, but it must be serious. Well, at least they're still here. Thank heaven for that. Hey, they're all excited about something. What has happened, Mother? Oh, a great deal. You three haven't moved out of this room since we left? No, sir. We have followed your instructions to the letter, Captain. Good. Now we'll have to work fast. Hmm? Doing what? Escaping from this place. Escaping? Yes, Joan, dear. We have a greater chance now than we'll ever have again. What has happened? One of the chambers... Silence! What? I am sorry. I forgot for the moment. But if you had not spoken, if I had been allowed to count the strokes of that alarm gong... I could have told you where the accident occurred. Oh, well, then, I'm sorry. I know about what is happening, but I'm not sure where. I have counted the strokes. There were 12. 12? Chamber 12. The airplane testing chamber. Well, what does it mean? The chamber is being flooded. They would sound a general alarm for nothing else. Well, it's general, all right. Every Euclidean in the place was running toward the other end of this first big cave. Yes. That would be correct. Chamber 12 is diametrically opposite our entrance to the city. Oh, but, but if that place is flooded, well, we'll all drown. Isn't there anything we can do? Oh, I thought something of trying to steal one of those rocket planes, but guards in the locks would stop us. If the guards are still there. Those men will remain. I have a plan. Well, hurry up with it. We need it. Oh, by all means, Elaine, hurry. If the captain will allow me. Huh? You must trust me now, Captain. Well, how did you know that I, I, well, uh, I mean, that what makes me think I don't? Now, I have a plan which may save all of our lives. Oh, we'll hear it gladly. Did you see your three former employees in the agricultural section? Yes, McLeod, the skipper, and Jim Lowe are still among their pigs and chickens. They would be of no assistance to the Euclidean. I will take them with me as I pass through there. Where is my Euclidean uniform? Well, in my room, you know, Give but... it to me. Well, Hurry. I'll get it. Well, what's the idea, Lane? I am going to steal a rocket plane, taking your three employees with me. My Euclidean uniform may get me through the guards, who will not know that I am no longer a Euclidean. If I can get into one of the rocket planes and out into the water, we are saved, at least for the moment. Oh, yeah, you are. But what about us? We haven't any Euclidean uniforms to sneak past those guards with. You will go up this narrow steel corridor leading to the airlock near the surface of the water. You mean the one we found in the crest of the volcanic crater? Precisely. In a panel in the wall, you will find helmets. Put them on. Wait there for me. When the shadow of my plane is over you, fill the lock with water and leave it. 
I will take you aboard. But what about provisions and what of these Euclidians? Please pull that uniform over my head quickly. I have no time to remove my dress. Oh, very well. Help me, dear John. Yes, Mother. I, I will take as many precautions as time will permit uh, to safeguard the escape. But uh, we will run certain risks. Oh, golly, Whiskers. We're used to that. How long will it take you to do all this? Probably less than 180 seconds. I will hurry, and you will not have more than enough time to gain the surface lock. But what if you fail? You will still be safe. Gee, golly, that girl's got nerve. Well, Tex? Oh, I'm sorry I suspected her. Well, this is no time for such worries. We must be on our way. Yeah, that's right. Well, if she gets a rocket plane up there in three minutes, we can't get there much ahead of her. Right. Come on, let's go. What do we take with us? Nothing but the clothes we have on. But, Tex, we're 4,000 miles from Los Angeles. Oh, and that rocket plane will make it in four hours. That's it, Pat. All we need is a chance to get away. Are you sure you remember which corridor we take? Oh, we found it once. Yes, and we'll find it again. Now, come on, out you go. Everybody, hurry. Well, let's see. We turn this corner right around to the left. Well, you lead the way, Jerry. A good idea. You and Joe in the metal pack. Come on, now, I'll bring up the rear. All right. Well, come on, then. Now, we'll have to hurry to beat that girl to the top of this thing. Oh, I don't like to be walking on this noiseless steel at a time like this. It's too easy for someone to slip up on us. So Jerry and I thought, Mother, until we discovered that all of these polished steel walls act as mirrors if anyone is following or approaching you. Why, sure they do. If we can see ourselves in them, why, we could see other people. Well, if anybody could s see how we look now, they'd sure get a laugh out of us. We aren't dressed for... A thousand-mile trip, and we're going to get wet and cold in that water. Yeah, and we're also going to get away from Euclidia. If we can trust that girl... I think you may do so, Captain. Well, I don't want you to think that I'm in the habit of running around suspecting people without reason. So I'll tell you why I'm afraid of that girl. Come on, let's keep walking as I tell you. Oh, yeah? Well, what is it? Well, she's been carrying a ray gun around with her. She advised us to leave ours in the sleeping room. Are you sure of that? Positive. I think I can explain that. Oh, golly... I wish you would, June, so the captain would stop suspecting that swell girl. I will. The commander, or Elaine, as we now know her, was afraid that Jerry might use the ray guns at the wrong moment, act on the spur of the moment, and do us more harm than good. Oh, is that so? She didn't think I had enough sense to take care of one of those things, huh? Well, maybe, maybe she isn't such a swell girl after all. Oh, take it easy, kid. It was all for your own good. Oh, well, I suppose it was, but... Golly, well, I never did get out any fun out of things that were for my own good. Well, at least that relieves our minds. This is a, a very steep climb. How much farther must we go? Only a little ways now. I think I can see the door to the lock there, just, just ahead of us. Oh, that can't be, Tex. We made a turn just before we came to the door. You sure of that, Jerry? Oh, you bet I'm sure. Tex, suppose you can't locate the door. Uh, we'll locate it, all right. <laughs> We did locate it. Oh, no, we didn't. That's just the turn in the wall you bumped into. You are correct, Jerry. How much, Father? Getting tired, Pat? Well, we're climbing awfully fast. Oh, it's just a little ways now. We're walking on solid rock. We must have come up at least 200 feet, I think. No, no, not quite. Our quarters are about 200 feet below the surface, and this lock is about 30 feet. Oh, here's the door, Tex. Right. Now get the palms of your hands against it. Aye, aye, Skipper. Why, that door slides down. Yes, Mother. I presume there is no room for it to slide in any other direction. That's right. We're in a narrow ledge of rock in the edge of the old volcano crater. Huh. Mighty little room. All right, okay, now in we go. Now, where's that panel with the diving helmets in it? It must be here, Jerry. This is the only opaque panel in the entire mm. room. Well, let's have a look then. Yeah, I'll give you a hand, Jerry. Now, Pat, you and Joan watch out into the water in all directions. Tell us the minute you see the shadow of that girl's rocket plane on the surface. Hey, Tex, she isn't on time. Well, she didn't give herself enough time. We're not ready for her anyway. I've got it, Tex. It's opening. Hey, and there's the helmet. And here comes the shadow of the... Why... I thought you said she'd have a rocket plane. That shadow was made by a submarine. I think not. Here now, here, start putting on your helmet. No, Mother, the rocket planes look like submarines. There's a helmet for you, Joan. Come on, get into it quick. Thank you. Right, now you go up first, Jerry. All right, you next, Joan. Then Pat, 
Now follow. Open that valve, kid. Open it is. Now, helmets on quick. Now just swim up. It's only 30 feet. Lock is opening. All right, shoot, kid. Good luck, everybody. Hey, Skipper! Open up, will you? Come aboard as rapidly as possible, Jerry. Make room for the others. Okay, Skipper. Boy, you sure move fast. Hey, Joe, over here. I'm coming, Jerry. Throw away your helmet. I have done so. Up forward, out of the way, Jerry. Hurry, Joe. I will get in as rapidly as possible. Everybody here? All the air tags. Where's Jerry? Jerry is aboard. Hurry up forward, Joan. Come, Mrs. <gasps> Gregory. Well, I'll do my best. Oh, these wet clouds. Hey, wait a minute. <clears throat> I'll give you a hand, Pat. Up forward, please, Mrs. Gregory. Be in the second lane. Close the door after you. I will prepare to take off. Okay, Elaine. Now we're all ship shape. Brace yourselves up forward as well as you can. We are crowded, but not overloaded. We will now take off. Oh, boy! We're off again! And in four hours, we'll be home. Four thousand miles away! That's pretty fast, but it's the best way to leave Euclidean. Hey, Elaine, where's the skipper and McLeod and the Chinese cook? They are in the forward baggage compartment. Everyone is safe. I will set my course for Los Angeles. How soon will the Euclidean's take out after us? Not for hours. I have magnetized their submarine locks. We will not be overtaken on this flight.